I know, I'm a bit toasty. Let's go ahead and get the, have you ever heard of sunscreen comments out of the way up front? Although I'm sure that will just compel some of you to leave that comment anyway. So a few days ago, I posted a snapshot on Twitter of a comment from one of my old YouTube videos. And in it, I dissect a few builds offered for sale by a company that I ultimately ended up not recommending to buyers. You can watch it here if you're interested. But from that came this comment from someone with the name Lil Blockchain. Now, right away, you must be thinking, and I get it, right? It could come across that way. But troll or not, the comment itself really got me thinking. And I wanna talk with all of you about it. Stay with me. The stylish Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3 offers exceptional cooling while maintaining a silent profile thanks to a PWM Shadow Wings 2 fan. And with a 190 watt TDP, expect plenty of overclocking headroom. Click the link below to learn more. So the comment in question reads, I ran a PC building company before. You have no idea about running a business. Do you realize how much advertising alone costs? It's definitely not cheap. If you even knew a small percentage of what it takes to sell a system, your head would explode. So ignoring the fact that I have extensively sold and flipped PCs in the past, it's actually how this channel started, and ignoring the fact that I have been running and growing a business for years, my education aside, what this person's saying is actually kind of true. Now, maybe not the advertising part, right? If you're spending boatloads on advertising without a solid ROI, then you're literally throwing money away. You're doing something seriously wrong. Most good businesses in reality shouldn't need to rely on advertising to drive sales, right? Maybe word of mouth, that could be, a, I guess it's a form of advertising if you wanna be really picky about it, but uh, we're talking about traditional advertising. Now that isn't to say that traditional advertising doesn't work. I mean, look at channels like Ty Lopez. Here in my garage. You wouldn't have even heard of the guy had it not been for those ridiculous ads he was paying Google thousands of dollars to promote. But in the world of PC building and flipping, such advertisements can be 100% futile. And there are several reasons why this could be the case. Competition from larger businesses, geography, where you're located, market trends, supply shortages, right? You need to soundly think about all of these things before going into business as a PC reseller exclusively. Now, obviously, selling on the side or as a hobby is one thing. You aren't relying on it to put food on the table. But individuals who almost exclusively sell computers as full-time jobs are especially sensitive to these variables. And it's why advertising in the traditional sense may not work. And to that end, if you're using sites like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or Letgo or whatever, you shouldn't need to spend money at all, right? I mean, these sites are free to use. You could pay extra to promote your ad on some of these sites, but the ad itself should speak for itself if it's written correctly and if you use good pictures and a catchy title that is not clickbaity. But anyway, advertising aside, PC reselling can be and often is difficult to make a living on. And here's why. You have margins, just like any other company. Those margins are often very small though. And if you build a, a system that let's say costs you $500 and you sell it for $600, you're only making a hundred bucks per system per day. And if you're only selling one system per day, a hundred bucks, if you have a brick and mortar store and you have other employees, you have utilities, you have tons of overhead, a hundred bucks a day ain't gonna cut it. But if you're working out of a spare bedroom in your house, which is where I recommend you start at least, don't start with a brick and mortar, especially if you have no idea what you're doing, too much risk involved there, then you're effectively valuing your labor for that PC, for this example we just used, at a hundred bucks. And if it takes two hours to build, clean, and cable manage said PC, then you're making 50 bucks per hour per build. Now that's not a bad hour, that's a really good actually hourly wage. Problem is you need to sell several PCs per day to account for a full work day of pay, 50 bucks per hour times eight, 400 per, per day, and then 2,000 per week, 8,000 per month, 96,000 per year, excluding holidays and sick leave, of course. And now that's, that's one heck of an annual salary for building PCs, which <clears throat> it isn't that difficult to do. But let's go back to the $400 per day thing. In order to make this figure, you would need to sell four PCs per day at a $100 markup each. We'll assume you only sell one kind of PC for this example. But brick and mortar, no way you're gonna be able to pull it off with just $100 per day income. I struggled to sell four PCs in a single month, granted, right? And, and I wasn't doing it for a living. I was in school full time, so I, I didn't really need to make a ton of money to live. I was living off scholarships and stuff at that point. Uh, but it's, it's, you see what I'm getting at, right? It's not easy. And it's often why resellers, more specifically small PC building companies, charge so much over retail. 
the brick and mortar ones especially. You see, the big businesses can largely get around this. They buy in bulk, they work out deals with the manufacturers, they work out deals with the shipping companies. I mean, they have means to increase margins and it sure beats the heck out of charging more on the consumer side. You can make more sales. But significantly smaller businesses, for the most part at least, don't have the necessary capital nor connections to save on the logistics or supply sides. And that's why they often charge more than we'd like for that $500 build. We should also mention competition because there's a metric crap ton of that, not just from other companies, but also from independent private third-party resellers, people who are just trying to get rid of spare hardware. You see, the reality is PC gaming has become more popular as of late, and while that's a good thing, it can also mean that there are more parts being flipped in the used market, which means more competition for those small businesses trying to sell pre-built or even individual components. And let me tell you, aside from the seller who occasionally dips into used parts, which can be a way to maximize profit, retailers in general hate competition in the used market. Why buy a brand new $1,000 gaming PC for a 100 FPS average in your favorite game when you could spend 500 bucks and get 85 FPS, 85% of the computer that costs twice as much money. Heck, you could even upgrade graphics cards later on and match, if not beat that $1,000 system for less investment overall. I always try to give used market options in graphics card videos especially uh, because there are some super great deals on sites like eBay. Maybe not now, I probably spoke too soon. At this, at this present moment, it's a little difficult to find good deals on certain cards. Uh, but it'd be a sin for anyone who values his or her dollar to not at least consider something secondhand in light of something as bulletproof as the eBay buyer protection guarantee. So just give it a look. But at the end of the day, that $100 markup on the $500 PC build may push your system into uncompetitive territory, despite such a markup not actually being really that bad. I mean, a $100 markup is pretty standard and I'd say for most builds, that's on the cheap side, to be honest. I mean, we've seen way worse on this channel. And at that point, you can only do one of three things. You can sit on the $600 price and hope someone bites. You can lower your price and sell it faster, but for a smaller profit. Or you can bundle the sale with maybe either a warranty or a future service, annual maintenance and cleaning, I don't know. Something to set yourself apart from the random e-sellers trying to make space for their newer PCs. Because that's who, again, you're ultimately competing with. Randoms online just trying to recoup portions of their initial investments. They're willing to take losses because they've had those components for years. They, they don't expect to get all of their money back. A few people do, a lot of those ads end up on this channel, but most people are realistic. But look, it happens all the time. Even in my own family, my dad was selling my mom's old car a few years ago. He decided to list it under market value, under what KBB recommended he sell it for, because he just wanted to sell it faster and make room for the newer model he had already purchased and had in the driveway. And sure enough, the old car sold within a week, which in car terms is pretty freaking fast, uh, and especially for a private seller. And these are, I mean, these are at least occasionally the kinds of sellers small businesses indirectly compete with on forums and marketplace. People just try and to get rid of old stuff, make space for the new components. It makes the market, the environment overall, particularly hostile for those small businesses. And it often drives prices down to better accommodate the general consumer. It's good for us, bad for the small businesses. At, at the end of the day, it's capitalism. And guess what? Capitalism relies on that dog eat dog mentality. The strongest businesses will survive. Those who fail to innovate, fail to compete on a price level and fail to market effectively will die without external aid. And I mean die in the metaphorical sense, come on. But your response to narrowing margins shouldn't be to increase prices across the board, especially if there's nothing that sets you apart from the competition, which is why I mentioned warranties and maintenance a bit earlier. If you attempt to charge $1,000 for a $500 build, you're going to draw unwarranted scrutiny. I have viewers literally every single day sending links to ads and businesses with insane markups on PCs. It's ridiculous how many of them do it. But if you understand the kind of behind the scenes business side of it, if you really take the time to think about profit margins and what actually goes into funding a full-time business that you solely rely on, you'll quickly realize that uh, it isn't very easy and it can at least somewhat explain why these companies mark up PCs by so much. Now, I am by no means justifying the three, 400% markups. If you're charging three grand for a $1,000 build, 
that's just straight up extortion in my book. I'm talking about the companies that are maybe two, 300 bucks over the build cost, right? You can't get mad at them for that because they have margins like, again, any other company. But at the end of the day, any corner you cut for the sake of fiscal viability will be juxtaposed with the corners other companies and individuals cut. And if you don't stack up against that competition, you won't make the sale, you probably won't make a living doing what you wanted to do, and you will almost certainly go out of business. It's cutthroat, it's why I never bothered. I crunched these numbers long ago, especially back when I was in college and this channel was just kind of getting off its feet and uh, I, I was flipping PCs to move through inventory to bring new content to you guys. It just, it wasn't worth a hassle in my book. Kudos to those who have managed to pull it off and are still going strong, especially in this environment right now. PC reselling is not easy particularly if you're doing it as a full-time job. And I hope I've at least explained in some detail why it can't be easy. On the side, sure, I mean, that's what I did again, and it takes the stress out of it. At the end of the day, if you break even or even lose a little money, so what? You had fun, you got to make a video or two out of it, and uh, you maybe even learned something through it all, which in my opinion is priceless. And the other stuff, not a bad price to pay, if you ask me. That's all for this one. Consider subscribing, comment down below, and I'll see you soon. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.